We're going to get us started this evening with a welcome from our Chief Executive, Stuart Rimmer, who's going to give you a bit of an overview about uh, Lowestoft Sixth Form College. Hi everyone, my name is Stuart Rimmer. I'm the Chief Executive and Principal here at East Coast College. I'm really pleased to welcome you to our virtual open meeting this evening. Over the course of this evening, hopefully you're going to find out why our college is so special and how we can support you over the next stage of your learning. Now, choosing the right place to study is one of the most important decisions that you'll have made so far. And I'm really pleased and keen to find a little bit more about East Coast College and more specifically Lowest Off Switzerland College and how we can help you gain those skills and qualifications you need to take that next step, that dream job or into the higher education. Uh, East Coast College is the largest Ofsted good provider in Great Yarmouth and Waveney, as well as being the largest STEM provider in the region. Now, 98% of our students go on to higher education or apprenticeships or employment. And this year, in our sixth form that you'll find a lot more about shortly, our A-level students achieved a 100% pass rate, which is superb. Um, all of our staff are industry specialists in everything they teach, and their passion really comes through, and that shows in the success of our students. That's where we're really proud of everything we do. We've got a huge range of courses, and you'll find them in the sixth form prospectus. Uh, and it's a really wide range of A-levels and BTEC courses. Um, and the idea of that is so that we give people the maximum opportunity, the maximum breadth of choice that we possibly can to study. Um, also the advantage of coming to our sixth form college is that it connects to the wider East Coast College, so accesses some of those industry specialist facilities that normal sixth form colleges can't do, such as our 11.3 million pound energy skills center for engineering provision uh, or our real work environments uh, where people can learn just like the industry specialists getting access to over 800 local employers uh, for industrial placements so I think that's what makes uh, our offer particularly unique. Uh, now one of the things I say when you come to East Coast College regardless of where you study is you're going to come away with three things. Firstly we're going to ensure that you get the skills and qualifications you need to be successful in your future career. Secondly, we're going to guarantee you a good progression. That might be to another course, it might be to higher education, university, it might be to a job and apprenticeship. We're going to make sure we get you to where you need to go. And finally, and I think the most important thing while you're in your next stage of learning is we're going to help you develop your well-being and your character. We're going to help you become that rounded individual. Skills and qualifications are important, but you as a person uh, and taking your time to develop over the next couple of years is really important to us too. And we've got amazing amounts of support mechanisms uh, here in the college. Uh, we, we look after our students tremendously well. That might be about academic support from your tutor, or it might be about more well-being and broad support through our student services teams. But we really look after our students. What you need to do for us in return is you turn up with your hard work and your commitment. And if you do that, I guarantee you'll be successful while you're at the college. So hopefully that starts to give a flavour of some of the things we do here in East Coast College and more specifically in Lower Stops Fixed Form College. Uh, I'm sure you're going to have loads and loads of questions and our specialists through the evening are going to help you. And if you don't find out everything you need, then please just get in touch, have a look at our website, have a look uh, and, and talk to our student services teams who can really guide you through the process. But I'm really excited to think about joining us and becoming part of our wider college community and college family. So thank you and I look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, so um, now you've heard from our Chief Executive, I'm going to pass you over to our lowest of sixth form principal, Keith Shields, who's going to give you a more in-depth look at what we offer as a college and why we are so successful. So over to you, Keith. Thank you, Stuart, and thank you, Amy. And obviously a big thank you for everybody who's logged in. My name is Keith Shields and I'm the principal of the sixth form college. What I want to do for the next four or five minutes, I just want to provide a quick overview of what you can expect while studying at Lowestoft Sixth Form College. The presentation will focus on four main points. The outstanding learning environment, our extensive and inclusive curriculum, our fantastic results year after year, and of course, our successful and happy students have progressed to do some amazing things. So I'll start looking at the learning environment. Uh, the Sixth Form Centre is a new building. It was built in 2011 and it cost in excess of £25 million to build and £3 million to equip. It's a beautiful building, indeed inspiring to both staff and students. 
A comment made recently by an Ofsted inspector sticks in my mind. She compared the building to a cathedral, light and airy, and that your eyes are drawn upwards to marvel at the architecture. As you can see on this slide, it's also well resourced with many purpose-built rooms designed to accommodate the learning of the modern day learner. I appreciate that many of you haven't actually had a chance to see inside our buildings and hopefully I can pass, go on to the next slide to show the, obviously the theatres and things like that, uh, which we've got the lecture theatres, the studios, the booths, all the modern stuff that a modern day learner would want. If I move on to the montage, my next slide, I think that if you have not had a chance to see inside the building, this gives you a quick little look at what's inside. Uh, this also seems a good time to mention that we have a new addition to our webpage, a 360 degree virtual tour. What is good enough for the Louvre and what is good enough for the Colosseum has now come to Lowest Off Sixth Form. And I know that one of my deputy DOFs and my DOFs later on will be showing a little bit more about the virtual tour. The links run through Microsoft Edge and Internet Explorer, if you want to take a look later. Now, turning on to the curriculum review. Uh, if we move on to the overview of the curriculum, our main curriculum offer is made up of level three qualifications, BTEC type qualifications and A-levels. However, approximately 20% of our uh, year 12 cohort is made up from level two students. We offer three GCSE subjects, maths, English, and science. We also offer Cambridge technicals in science as a progression route to level three. Uh, if you pass that successfully on a three year course, you'll be able to move on to our level three BTECs. And obviously after that, perhaps progress to university. Uh, you could potentially go on to some A-level courses as well by completing the Cambridge Techni uh, Technical. However, we do obviously appreciate, obviously the A-levels and the BTECs are slightly different. You'll be more geared up to go into a BTEC level three route. All students studying our level two curriculum route will also have a program that supports their progression and career aims. We aim to support everybody at an individual level. At level three, as well as level three, we offer over 24 A level courses and 10 BTEC courses, but every student will be seen as an individual. Moving on to our next slide, it gives you the course A levels and BTECs. We have 24 A levels. Uh, these are now two year linear qualifications, so they are two year courses. But what I want to point out really is that we're constantly updating our curriculum offer. And this year we've added computer science and environmental science to our program. Geology has been added for the 2021 start. So just keep an eye out on the web page and look at social media. We are constantly looking to update our curriculum. Using the well-established expertise of East Coast College, many of our learners can now cross-pollinate between the two sites. So you can visit both sites and take courses such as engineering, making the most of the new equipment and infrastructure, which is on offer in the Energy Centre. Literally, the Energy Centre is 25 yards away, just a small stone throw away. So you are still part of the Sixth Form College, but using the best facilities East Coast can offer. My next slide goes on to the vocational courses. Uh, if we look at the vocational type courses, we are looking at, as I say, uh, the BTECs, RQF BTECs or Cambridge Nationals. These courses are supportive of a range of work-based opportunities, e.g. medical science students with a chance of attending the James Paget Academy programme, which allows students to experience various sections of the hospitals. BTECs can be mixed together according to the qualification side, and some of our students will attempt to mix BTEC and A-level programme. Again, the programme a student will study will be discussed at an individual level. Right, our next slide, which you just had a sneak preview of, is our outstanding results. Now, I'm immensely proud of the achievements of this college, and it's not just this year, it's been for five, six years, we produce results which are the envy of most people in the country. So if you ask yourself, are students likely to achieve well at lowest off sixth form? The answer is yes. Obviously, as I said before, we are proud of the results. 100% A-level pass rate this year. 
a 73% A star to B high grade, a 96% A star to C. And let's not forget the BTEC diploma. 89% of our students taking a level three BTEC got the distinction style or distinction grade. This has made us one of the most successful colleges in the country. We've been rated for the last five years in the top 25% for value added measures. That measures progress a student makes. This year, we've been rated in the top 5%. Indeed, as well, some of our subjects, including some STEM subjects like maths, physics, and IT, are being rated in the top 1%. If you come to the college, you can be assured of a good education. It's been five years in a row, these wonderful results. We're not a yo-yo college. We're not a flash in the pan college. This is a consistent performing college. If I move on to my slide, my next slide there, I'm looking at happy students, basically. And when I see happy students, I like to think, that's just to say that they're happy because one, they're in a fantastic environment. Two, they're well supported by their teachers and other colleagues inside the building. And three, they've been successful. We've got fantastic facilities, great support, outstanding teachers and results. And this creates these happy learners. But I don't want you just to listen to me. Let's ask some of our current students. I give you Bryony now. Thank you. Hello, I'm Bryony Williamson and I study an extended diploma of performing arts at the Lowestoft Sixth Form College. I chose to study at the Lowestoft Sixth Form College because I really just wanted to focus on singing, dancing and acting as that's what I want to go into a career in in the future. And I had also met a few of the teachers before coming to Lowestoft Sixth Form College and I had been to the Sixth Form. So I was familiar with it, so it made my experience a lot less nerve wracking joining the Lowest of Sixth Form College. I had found out about my course through my high school as we had come to the Lowest of Sixth Form and performed in some of their previous showcases. In my opinion, the best things about the Sixth Form is how supportive everyone is, including the students and the teachers, that I can just focus on what I love doing, the friendships I have made while being at college and also how good the courses are because although I've only been studying at the last or sixth form of college for three weeks I can already see loads of progress like I'm a lot more flexible and I'm also a lot more confident especially when it comes to acting. The advice I would give someone who's choosing what courses they want to study is just do what you love because they are your A-levels or BTECs and there is a lot of work which goes into it, so you really do need to be passionate about what you're taking. My future plans after leaving the Lowest of Sixth Form College are to hopefully get into a performing arts school near London. Erdang would be my dream performing arts school, but I'd be happy to get anywhere and to eventually become a performing arts teacher or a choreographer one day. Okay, evening everyone. So uh, I'm just going to give you an overview now of the subjects that we have within the creative faculty at the Sixth Form College. Uh, so in, in the creative faculty, we have a range of A-level and BTEC qualifications. Uh, so as an A-level, uh, as an A-level, you can take uh, art, art and design, photography, graphic communication, English language, English literature, film studies and philosophy. Some of these combine very well with science or humanities subjects. So for example, uh, philosophy would combine well with law, politics or criminology. And some of them also combine very well with some of our vocational programmes. So for example, those of you who want to work in marketing, advertising, television, film or other entertainment industries, taking film studies as an A-level alongside our digital media course can give you a full programme that prepares you really well for those, those industries. Uh, graphic communication is a new course that we're running in September 2021. And we've done that really to reflect the growing number of jobs in this area, um, locally and nationally. So if you're looking to work in areas like marketing or architecture, graphic design, advertising, illustration, games design, interior design, or, or media or product design, you should consider the graphic communications course as part of your program, perhaps alongside other subjects like IT, games design, photography, art, or media. Uh, for graphic communication, you don't have to have studied art at GCSE to study this either. 
We also offer the extended project qualification as a fourth subject choice to any students who wish to enhance their applications to university. So the extended project qualification or EPQ is a research project that you conduct on a topic of your choice and through the guidance of a supervisor at the college you develop a really good understanding of how to conduct high quality research and answer a specific research question within your topic. So this could be your chance to study astrology, geology or a, a specific hobby or interest that you have outside of your studies or it could allow you to delve further into a very specific interest you have in one of your current subjects which might help to enhance your university application. So each of these A-levels can be taken alongside any other subjects to make your full program, which should be equivalent to three A-levels in total, with a fourth choice of EPQ if you wish. Uh, for more information on the content of these A-level courses, you can have a look at our prospectus or at our website. So on the next slide, we have our uh, BTEC courses within the creative faculty. Um, we have a range of these that can be taken in different sizes. All of our either one, two, or in some cases, three A-levels, which allows you to take them alongside other subjects if you wish, or just by themselves if you want to specialize in one area. If you do want to work in a certain industry and we offer a full vocational program in that subject, I would certainly advise that you do that, as our BTEC and CTEC courses equivalent to three A-levels allow you to explore the subject in much more depth by completing a larger range of units on different topics. Music, performing arts, uh, which covers dra dance and drama and sport, are three subject areas where you can complete qualifications equivalent to one, two or three A-levels. So if you want to work in the musical performing arts industries, either in front or behind the scenes, uh, then these courses would be best for you. In sport, the range of units you cover will prepare you for roles working in elite sport or in the health and fitness industries. Digital media is another program that we offer equivalent to either one or two A-levels. And as I said before, students who are looking to work in television or film can add an A-level film study to this program to complement this subject. Um, oh. Students looking to work in areas like journalism, marketing or advertising could look to complement their digital media qualification with subject choices like English, graphics or other subjects. But as Keith said before, we look at each student as an individual. Um, but there's plenty of subjects within the creative area that will complement each other or work with programs in the humanities or STEM area. So I'm going to hand over now to Katie, who's going to talk through the humanities area. Hey everyone, I'm Katie. I'm Deputy Director for the Humanities Faculty. Um, there's a lot of different subjects in the Humanities Faculty, so what I'm going to do is try and group them together and talk you through some of the ones that complement each other, um, as well as obviously they can be complemented by other subjects as well. Um, Psychology and sociology are two subjects that quite often go together. Um, I'm going to talk through the topics that are covered in each subject so that you'll be able to hopefully see why they complement each other and why you might want to study them together. Um, for example, psychology covers topics such as social influence, memory, attachment, psychopathology, which is the illness of the mind. So things like OCD and depression, and phobias, you'll learn all about the really interesting stuff. Um, sociology looks more into the environment, um, migration and globalization. Um, it poses questions such as, um, why are we so obsessed with celebrities and is there still a British class system? And um, so real questions that really get you thinking. Um, another really popular subject is criminology. It's really accessible and um, really, um, really, really popular. It focuses entirely on the study of crime, whereas AS law um, looks at the English legal system and criminal law, as well as obviously many other aspects of law. Um, the next group of subjects I'm going to talk about is geology, environmental science and geography. Geology is brand new, as Keith said earlier, it's a brand new course for next year. And it will focus on Earth's structure, composition, and the development over time. For example, when a volcano erupts or um, an earthquake happens, how that changes the landscape. Um, environmental science looks at the living environment. It's all about the natural world and going outside and exploring outside of the classroom, looking at the physical environment, um, energy resources, pollution and sustainability. So if you're, if you're interested in climate change and the different, the things happening in the world today, then our environmental science could be for you. Um, 
geography is in that group that looks more at coastal systems, migration and disease, the hazardous earth and how people, how humans respond to natural disasters. So not necessarily the changing landscapes, but more about the human response. Um, IT and digital game design are two subjects that are very often studied together. Um, IT looks at cyber security and social media and challenges how students look below the surface of what IT actually is used for. Um, so more than does it switch on and switch off again. Um, it can be studied as one, two or three A levels and is often complemented by games design. Um, which looks at digital media industry and equips students with practical skills needed to actually build a game. So time spent, spent creating 2D and 3D environments and characters and these platforms that are created go towards a final project in games. Um, the next few subjects that I'll talk about are A-level business, BTEC business and economics. Again, complementing subjects. Um, it kind of depends whether you prefer exams or coursework. BTEC subjects are 50-50 usually, coursework and exam. A-level business is three external exams at the end of year two. So it, it matters if you prefer to sort of focus every, all your energy on one place or you prefer a modular approach. Um, both cover finance, marketing, recruitment, events planning, international business, pitching different business ideas and loads more other stuff. Economics sheds light on why resources are distributed in the way, how money works. Right, I think that's Katie done. Um, so hi guys. I think Katie's done. Yes, she has done. Right, good evening guys. My name is Ian McLean. I'm the Director of Science and Maths here at the Sixth Form. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit through uh, what subjects we have to offer in STEM uh, and where those subjects can lead you. So as before, we talked about BTECs and A-levels. So same with science and maths, we have, uh, we have A-level subjects and we have BTEC subjects. And again, the A-level subjects are predominantly exam based and the BTEC subjects do have exam content, but they also have uh, coursework as well. So on the first slide here for STEM, we've got all the, uh, the A-levels in science and, and maths. So we've got biology, chemistry, computer science, maths for the maths and physics. So I'm going to talk you through some popular combinations that we have and again where those where those combinations might lead you. Um, so one of the most popular combinations we do see students taking is either the three sciences, so chemistry, biology and physics, uh, or sometimes they decide to take maths with two sciences, so maths, biology, chemistry or maybe maths, chemistry, physics, etc. Um, there is actually quite a lot of maths content now in the new science specs. So um, yeah, so actually having maths alongside the science A-levels can be quite useful, particularly with physics. Physics is uh, very heavy in terms of maths. And obviously where that can lead, if you're thinking of a science degree uh, or a science career, if you're thinking of maybe medicine or veterinary science, uh, those subjects are definitely going to be for you. Um, so moving more towards the sort of physics side and the engineering side, so there's another combination that I see students, particularly this year, taking, which is maths, uh, physics, and either further maths, or possibly the science and engineering course, which is on the next slide. But um, so those those are quite popular combinations in terms of students who want to go into maybe physics, uh, physics degree, maths degree, maybe an engineering degree, uh, uh, and similar. So. Yeah, I think a lot of our students these days are really keen on the sort of engineering side and that's 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 why we're now offering the new engineering course. And again, it complements well with maths, with physics and the sciences. Um, so students, of course, as well, may want to just sort of focus a lot on mathematics. Uh, and of course, we offer maths uh, with further maths. So if you are studying the maths A-level, you are then entitled to do the further maths A-level as well. They're two separate A-levels. Uh, and again, students who want to go on and actually study mathematics or uh, maybe go into uh, mathematical research, uh, or, or you know, become a maths teacher or similar, uh, that's definitely a good option. In terms of computer science, so actually computer science goes very well with maths as well, um, as well as the sciences, as well as possibly IT and other subjects. Uh, but in terms of computer science, if you're interested in programming, uh, sort of software development, that sort of thing, then computer science is definitely for you. Uh, what we tend to find is universities do like students who are doing computer science with mathematics. It's quite a strong combination. Um, so that's our A-levels. I'll move on to the next slide, which is our BTECs. So these are the, the two main BTECs we offer in STEM are Biomedical Science BTEC 
and uh, Forensic Science BTEC. So the two courses do share sort of core science elements, okay? So maths, uh, sorry, physics, chemistry, and biology are core in both of those subjects, okay? So whether you do biomedical science or whether you do forensic science, you will be doing a lot of sort of core physics, biology, chemistry units. Um, but if we focus a bit more on the actual biomedical side, so <clears throat> this will then focus on more things towards the actual um, medicine. So things like uh, medical physics and other things related to that, a lot more anatomy. Um, and actually as well as that, we do run what's called the James Paget Health Academy. That runs in tandem with the biomedical science course. You don't have to study biomedical science to do that, but it does allow students the opportunity to go into the James Paget and experience life as sort of a nurse or midwife or similar. So that's a great um, sort of, we run that alongside and it's great for students who want to get that experience. Uh, moving on to forensic science, as I said, again, forensic science does have the core science units, but then you can specialize more on the forensic side. So we have things like for, for, uh, forensics uh, genetics, forensics photography, uh, we have sort of crime scene investigations, fire investigations, all sorts of really exciting parts to the forensics course that we offer as well. Uh, again, those two courses are probably two of our most popular courses at the college. So, um, and because they're BTECs, of course, they, they do suit students who aren't keen on just doing a full, uh, full exam program, as it were, full A-level program. You can do coursework with exams. Uh, as mentioned again there with the science and engineering course, which we talked, I talked about a minute ago. And again, that science engineering course links in really well with sort of maths and the physics uh, for students who do want to go on to, to study engineering or become engineers. The last course on there is a level two science in healthcare. Uh, this is kind of like an access course into the actual biomedical science or forensic science courses. So if you're sort of needing that extra year to get yourself ready for the level three course, you can take that level two course. Okay, so that's the end of the, the discussion on STEM subjects, both A levels and BTECs. Uh, we're now going to have a hear from one of our students uh, to tell us a bit about his experience. This is Duncan. Hi, my name is Duncan Hall. I'm 16 years old and I'm currently studying at Lowest of Six from College, taking Performing Arts, GCSE English and GCSE Maths. Uh, I chose to study at Lowest of Six Form because once I met the teachers, I felt that this was a good environment to be in and it, was, it, it took a, quite a big process. But once I met each teacher who would be teaching me, I realised that actually this was the right environment for me to take the next two or three years in. Um, I found my course really, really, really helpful. Um, I've learned so much in the past three or four weeks we've been here. So I, I think that has helped, you know, each teacher I've worked with has got helped in different things, especially with performing arts. I've helped, been, you know, helped me improve in my performing arts and English. I've improved in maths. I've gotten better. So that's how I, I found my course, you know, I found my course so helpful and really, really good fun. And the people there just, you know, all the teachers and staff are great. Um, the best things about college, I would say, are how easy to talk to the staff are um, because they're really really helpful they are there if you need something they're there straight away there's someone who can talk to you someone who will talk to you and they're so easy to talk to they're like your they're like your friends rather than your teachers sometimes because you have that like you know you can just talk to them like they're your friends um, also the friendships you make that's that's something I really 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 have loved at college the past few weeks um, advice I would give I would give advice that you should work hard put your head down and put your work in on time but also make friends have fun and just you know enjoy yourself you know these are the people you're with you know you're gonna be with them for the next two years so you should you know you work hard with them be make friends with them you know and get your work in on time um my plans for the future, I would say I'm hoping to go to university to study musical theatre after I leave the college. I will then go on to take performing arts. I will then go on to as, as a, take it as a bachelor's degree at university before moving on to uh, taking it as a, as a master, extending that into a master's degree. Um, and then I would like to move into the performing arts industry um, in some form, preferably musical theatre. Um, and work professionally in the musical theatre industry and maybe do some teaching in performing arts as well. Thank you. Hope you choose to come to our college and thank you. Hi everybody.
everybody. My name is Nikki Lane. I'm Assistant Principal for Student Wellbeing and Support. Uh, it's lovely to hear from our students there. And now you've heard a little bit more about the courses on offer at the sixth form, I'm just going to run through some of the student support services that are available to you and to help you whilst you're at college. It's really important to us whilst you're at college that we support you right from the beginning part of your journey, which for, um, for some might be now, this might be your first kind of contact with us to find out more about uh, what's on offer to you all the way through your journey to the point where you leave us to go to university onto an apprenticeship or employment with training whatever you choose um, uh, as a career path for you so just starting with the applications process which many of you might be at that stage now um, we can support you um, through your applications you'll um, you'll join us for an interview either face to face or via telephone and we'll talk to you about the courses that you've just heard so much about um, and really help guide you around what the content of the course is in a little bit more detail, how your skills and interests actually suit those courses and the career path that you can um, take once you've um, finished and completed those courses. If you need any support with your application, uh, please do get in touch with us. Um, you can contact me directly um, on the here to help at eastcoast.ac.uk um, and that, that email comes to me and I will find a member of our applications team to support you with that or if you wanted to speak to a teacher before your application um, but we can arrange that for you just to make sure that you're absolutely um, happy with the, the choices that you're making. We have a dedicated team um, if you have a special educational need or disability. Um, the team can support you through your application process but they're there all the way through your journey um, to, to support you um, and give you the advice that, that you need to do the absolute best that you can do while you're at college. Whilst you're at the sixth form, you will have a dedicated um, student achievement mentor linked to you personally, who will help you through um, any kind of questions that you have whilst you're at college, but they'll also talk you through and support you through the tutorial programme. Within the tutorial programme, you focus on um, career support and wellbeing. Um, and that's to kind of help you, as Stuart mentioned right at the beginning of, um, of this session, to become kind of and develop that whole person, that your character. So you're moving into um, further education and employment, really ready to kind of take that on into your career. We have a specialist careers advisor who will be able to help you uh, kind of work through what those um, career plans are and support you with your UCAS application to, to university. Um, and kind of and be there for you really whenever you need that help. Our wellbeing and safeguarding team um, have been um, given an award or commendation for our mental health support over the last two years from the Association of Colleges, uh, which is a really nice accolade for, uh, for the work that, um, uh, that our team kind of put into making sure that you are, you're okay and you're doing the best that you can whilst you're with us. We have a student finance department. I'm just going to move on to the next slide. It just gives a little bit more detail on that. Um, so our student finance team can help you find the best travel solution for you. Um, so if you're traveling into Lowestoft from around the, the county, uh, we can work with you to make sure that you can find the best route for you. And there is financial support on offer. We have a discretionary learner support fund, which can help you with various aspects of your time at college, whether that might be accessing a trip, um, equipment that you might need for your course um, or potentially free college meal scheme. So if you access free college meals, um, your college card is uploaded with the, um, the finance that you're awarded. So it's very discreet and you can pay for your um, for your meal um, quite easily whilst you're in any one of our kind of um, food points in the, in the college. Um, if you need childcare, we have Care to Learn scheme. Um, this is something that we can work um, through with you if you need that support while you're at college and our student finance team, whose details are on the next slide, um, are contactable from, from this point onwards uh, for anybody who'd like to find out more. Okay, uh, so we can see student finance at eastcoast.ac.uk there on the slide, but you can also have a little look into um, the Care to Learn scheme and Advanced Learn Alone um, scheme if you're 19 plus. Um, for um, what you can support in terms of um, um, financial. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next slide now. And I'm going to hand you over to um, Ian to talk you through a virtual tour. Uh, and I hope to see you very soon. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Nikki. 
Okay, so as you've probably heard so far in the uh, in the discussion, Keith at the very start mentioned our virtual tour. So I'm going to give you a little demo of this, uh, just so you guys are aware how to actually access the tour. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is go to the college website. You click on the drop down student life and then virtual tour. If you scroll down, uh, there'll be a little link in the middle there. Click on that little link there and select take the tour. All right, so you get a, first of all, a zoomed out uh, version of our college. There it is and it will take you straight to the front door at reception, there's our reception. And all you gotta to do to sort of take the tour is just double click on a certain point and it will take you to that point, nice and easy, a little bit like Google Street View. Um, so as, we, as you can see right now, we are currently in what we call the college atrium. This is the, uh, this is the place where students spend a lot of their time at breaks and lunches, hanging out. Um, we are currently on our way around to the performance space. So as we go around here, this is where we hold lots of our gigs, our performances, our showcases. And uh, as you can see, a nice, nice big space here. Um, and actually, if we, can, if we go back out into the atrium again, um, we'll keep moving around. We can, in a second, uh, go into our sort of media suite over on the right hand side here. So if we sort of take a wonder in here. Um, so on the right here, we've got our uh, Mac Media Suite, which is one of our uh, main media suites. And on the left-hand side next to that, we have our green screen room. Um, so lots of our recording and filming takes place in here. Uh, also as well, if you want to change floor, uh, you can click in the bottom left-hand corner down there, uh, select on the floor you wanna go to. We'll go to floor two, and it will take you up to the next floor. So very, very clever. Uh, anyway, I won't uh, go on about this too much, but obviously you guys can have a play in your own time. And I do advise you to do that uh, just to give you guys a feel for how the college looks and take a wander around. All right. So on to our next slide, which is our next events. Um, I'm sure you're wondering, when can I get myself into this college and speak to some teachers and get some more information? Uh, so we do have two upcoming events. Uh, the first one is Saturday, the 10th of October. That's our college open event from 10 to 1. Uh, this is a chance to actually, like I said, come into the building and meet people, see how the building, building feels uh, and take a tour around actual in real life rather than just virtually. Um, so that'll be a great time to come and meet teachers and have a chat and just, you know, get more of a feel for the college. So that's our first one. And then the, the next event after that is our subject information evening. That's on Thursday, the 12th of November. Um, and again, this is a good chance to come speak to teachers. Actually, this will be more focused on subjects so you can get some more information about the subjects you want to do uh, and ask those questions I'm sure you want to be asking. Uh, both of those events will involve a booking system. Uh, as you can see for the event on Saturday, the 10th of October, there is a link down the bottom there, which is lowestoftsfc.ac.uk slash college open event. If you go to that link, you'll be able to book in a slot for that event. So my advice would be to book that in as soon as you can. Uh, and then obviously, obviously more details will follow for the uh, subject information evening on Thursday, the 12th of November. But hopefully we'll see you guys at one of those two events uh, soon. And finally, I'm sure you're all wondering, how do I apply? So again, nice and easy. So if you just go to the college website, lowestoftsfc.ac.uk, there is a apply drop down, and it will look exactly as it looks on the screen right now. In fact, if you go on any of the courses on the website, there's a big apply button now, click on that and it will take you here. All you need to do is put in the subjects that you're interested in. Don't panic if you're not totally sure what you wanna do. Just put some subjects in that you think you wanna do, uh, fill the rest of the form out and submit it nice and easy. Doesn't take too long. And then you're on the system and then we'll be in, we'll be in touch with you guys soon. So that's the application. I'm now gonna hand back to Amy, who's gonna uh, hand over to Q&A. Great, thank you, yes. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. So now we're going to take some of your questions and um, get some answers for you. So we've already had some come in throughout the presentation, so we'll, we'll get to those in a second. If anyone else has got any they'd like to add in, then as I said, pop them in the Q&A box and uh, we'll, we'll get to them. So I'll start going through the ones that we have already received. So uh, first question, and this is a good question that somebody's asked, when should I apply? Is there a deadline? Is there a cut-off date? When is a good time to apply to uh, join us for 2021? Um, I don't know who wants to take that first question. I'll take it. Um, so you can start applying now. The website um, application process is, is open. Um, if you start applying now, you will hear back from our admissions team to start booking um, interviews. Um, and you can apply, apply all the way through um, this next academic year that um, you're at school. 
Um, or if you're not a school and, and applying, then you have that um, year up until next September to apply. I would encourage you to apply as soon as you can. Um, it doesn't matter if you apply and actually you have questions or you want to um, change your subject, you can do that as part of the application process. We'd rather you did that and asked us questions to make sure that you, you um, end up on the right course for you and we can help you. Great, thank you Nikki. Uh, next question, somebody has asking, uh, is it true that you get a free gym membership to Water Lane Leisure Centre if you are a student at Lowestoft Sixth Form College? Who can help with that one? I'll, I'll take it, shall I, Keith? Uh, the answer is simply yes. Yeah, we do. So uh, all students uh, will get uh, free access to the gym next door, as well as swim. Um, there are some there are some time limits on that, but the answer basically is yes, you will have that perk. Great. Thank you, Ian. And uh, yeah, what, what a great perk that is for our students. Um, a question here. Uh, early in the presentation, it was mentioned about medical science. They haven't been able to find much information about it. Um, where will they find the information about this? Well, I can probably jump in and help initially in that saying we're currently in the process of adding all our new courses to our website. So if it's not there yet, just give us a day or so. It will be there. We've got all this information um, and, and we're getting them added um, as soon as possible. We've had quite a few changes to our curriculum. Obviously, we adapt it all the time based on uh, what everybody's interested in and, and the sort of changing world around us. So if you can't find the information you're after just yet, if you could just give us a couple of days, we are on the case. We've got loads of great courses still to update and pop on our website and it should all be there by the end of this week. So thank you for flagging that one up and we will definitely make sure that's on there soon. Um, question here, um, and, and this is a good one, as we, we sort of, I believe this is new for us this year. So what is a C-TECH? Can someone explain, is it similar to a B-TECH? What are the differences? Who can help with that one? I'll quite happily take that one. Uh, the C-TECH is very similar to the B-TECH, that it's a vocational type course. Uh, it's the rival to actually uh, the B-TECH. The C-TECHs are Cambridge Technicals, while the B-TECHs are owned by Pearson, to put it in a nutshell but it's very, very similar. There will be some external assessments on all CTECs as well as BTECs, but it's a majority coursework type course. Both of, you, both of them are accepted by universities, so there's no issues there. Great, thank you, Keith. Um, just to go back as well on that earlier question we had about medical science, I've just been informed by my colleague that uh, runs our website that um, it is already on there and you'll find that it's actually listed under biomedical science. That's probably why you can't see it, um, but it is on there. So if you go back up and check now, you will find the information on there. So um, go back on our website when this is finished and, and take a look. It's, it's already there apparently. So that's great. Um, okay. Oh, another question here about the biomedical science course. So um, is it a diploma or extended certificate how many A-levels would you also include when studying with it? I'm quite happy to oh. take this one as well, but uh, Ian, if you wanted to, it's up to you. I was trying to find my microphone. I couldn't turn it on. Um, yeah, so biomedical science, it tends to run as what we call an extended diploma, which is the equivalent of three A-levels. So that's the most common program you would take with it. Uh, so basically by itself as a full three A-level equivalent program. Um, you can take it as a diploma as well. So that's like the equivalent of two A-levels. Um, so you could take the double as it were, so two A-level equivalent alongside something else. Um, but we, we, we do tend to encourage students to go for the full extended diploma. Uh, you get the most out of the course uh, and it's, it's like the easiest package in terms of going through to uni. So um, yeah, it tends to be the extended diploma. Did you want anything to that, Keith, or is that? <laughs> Can't find our microphones, can we? No. <laughs> um, Ian, while, while you're there, another question for you. Right. Um, is the science and engineering course more theory based or do you get the opportunity to undertake any practical work? Good question. Uh, it's actually about 50-50. So there is a lot of theory. Uh, listen, if you go on to engineering university, you, there'll, be, there'll be loads of theory. Uh, in fact, lots of maths as well, lots of physics. Uh, so obviously we, we need to make sure there's a lot of theory in the course. But at the same time, yes, we do offer lots of practical. As Keith mentioned, we've got the, the, the new energy skills centre where we, where we can do some, uh, there's lots of new equipment over there. Um, so yeah, it's about 50-50 basically, 50-50 in terms of theory and practical. Great, thank you. Um, we had a question here, I think we covered this, but I will just go over it again, um, just, just to make sure everyone's sure. So somebody's asked, when does the application process begin and how do we apply? So the answer is you can apply from now. 
So um, the application form is on our website. It's geared up for you to apply for um, next year's intake, so a 2021 start. Um, so you can apply now. It's not too early. It's a great time to get it in, get it done early, and, and know that you've kind of secured your space. Um, all you need to do is go to our website, as, as Ian said. Um, there's a big apply now button, and also on our course pages, you can find how to apply. There's an application form. You just need to fill in what your um, sort of preferred choices are for studying. It gives you options to list even more courses. So if there's lots of things and you're not quite sure yet what you want to do, or you want to put down some additional subjects um, just in case you change your mind later, that's completely fine. There's plenty of space to do that. Um, just fill it in, get it in as soon as you as soon as you can, as soon as you're ready, and uh, then yeah, someone from the admissions team will be in touch and and they'll take you through the next steps from there. So I hope that helps. Um, somebody's asked the question here: Do you do AS levels? Is someone able to to explain the AS A level um, thing for for? for yes, yeah, so I'll happily take the question actually. <laughs> that uh, in the past we have done AS levels, which are taken as a halfway house before going on to the full A level. But uh, the way things have changed, many of the AS levels now have actually been taken off by Ofqual. So all our A-level courses now are the linear A2 type courses, which are two-year courses. So you have to be fairly sure when you start these courses at the, at the start of your, uh, obviously, your study, that you are happy with this and you want to continue for two years. Great. Thank you, Keith. Um, a performing arts question here. Uh, I'm really interested in applying for performing arts. Are there any opportunities throughout the year to take part in performances? Um, Matt, is that, your, is that you? I don't mind taking that one, Matt. Yeah. Um, yes, usually. Um, local schools do join in and perform, other local schools. Um, hopefully is the answer this year, due to COVID, if, we, if our performances go ahead, um, if we're allowed an audience and if we're allowed visitors. So yes, fingers crossed, and that would be in March, 25th of March, um, our big showcase, um, and we'll be inviting the schools. Is that, is that usually held at the, at the college in, in the theatre that we saw? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. Okay, um, somebody has asked, what is art and design like? What do you do during the course? Who can give a bit more of an overview of our art and design course? I can give, I can give that one a go. Um, so art and design um, is about exploring different mediums, so um, whether that's painting, drawing, uh, computer-based kind of design work, etc, etc. Um, and you're, you're given different themes or topics to explore, I don't know, it could be nature or, or mood or something like that. And the idea is that you use uh, those different mediums to explore that topic, look at what different artists have done, different styles, etc, etc. Uh, and you create a portfolio of work that leads towards a, a final piece. And um, that's probably my best stab at answering that one. Great, thanks Matt. As we said before, we have got coming up, obviously our open campus event where you can talk to our tutors as well. And obviously we'll have our art, art and design tutor there and the same with our subject events as well. So if there is a particular subject and you really do want to know more about it individually, then those events are a really great chance to, to come along and ask those questions. So keep an eye out for those as well. Okay, another question here. This is a great question. Do I need to know what job I want to do when I'm older before choosing my A-levels? Because I don't have any idea yet. Who can help with this one? I'll take that one. Um, the answer is no, you don't have to know exactly what job you want um, after you finish. Um, a, the, the, a good idea um, would be for now to start researching actually the types of um, careers that suit your skills and strengths. Um, so if you can do that research now, uh, whilst you're kind of looking at the application stage and apply for those things that you think actually would suit your skills and strengths. What we can do is start to talk to you about the types of career pathways that you can take. And that's part of what we're there for, to actually kind of, you know, support you through that. We have a specialist careers um, advisor on site to give you that proper guidance um, about how you can access different careers and what you need to, to do to get there and all the long term um, kind of prospects in um, different career paths. But your student achievement mentor um, is there alongside you to kind of help you work out um, perhaps what some of those strengths are as, as you develop your skills whilst you're, you're at sixth form. So it, it is a real journey. So if you know now what you want to do, that's absolutely fine. Um, there's no problem with that. But if you don't, 
um, we will support you through that. Can I just add something to that? Is that right, Amy? Yeah, sure. Please do. So also as well, just so you guys know, um, so when you do apply, uh, if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I don't know what I want to do, and that kind of puts you off, don't worry about it. Just put you put down the subject you think you might want to do. And then what we're going to do is invite you along to sort of come to have a conversation with, with one of us on the screen right now. And then, of course, we can have a chat with you and we can talk it through and we can help as well. So don't panic if you're not really sure exactly what you want to do. It's no big deal. You can just apply anyway with the courses you think you might want to do. And then when you come along and chat to us, we'll certainly give you help and guidance to, to decide uh, what you might want to do. Great, thank you. Um, on that same kind of uh, theme, um, somebody's asking about courses and, and what might mix well together. So um, he wants to do engineering, but he'd also like to learn business about business as well. Should he do physics and maths with engineering or would something like economics be better to go with business? Okay, I'll take that question. Um, so yeah, so in terms of en engineering is there is a lot of content that, that involves maths and physics. So we're not saying that students have to do both maths and physics. We do strongly encourage that they do do maths. Um, so again, I think back to, to my maths degree and I actually was with a uh, friend of mine who was doing an engineering degree and his engineering degree was, there was more maths in it than there was in my degree. So uh, in summary, there will be a lot of maths uh, down the road in engineering. So we are strongly encouraging students to do maths with engineering. You don't have to do physics. Um, so you could potentially do engineering with maths and then economics or something like that, or maybe maths, engineering and business. Those combinations are okay. But again, it is strongly encouraged to take maths with engineering, yeah. Great, and, and if you do still have questions about that and you're not sure, as, as Ian and, and Nikki said before, we, you know, we can support you with that, we can help you with that. You don't need to know exactly right now. If you're not quite sure what works well together, pop them down in your application form and then when you come in and, and see our tutors, they can, they can help you work out the best mix for you. Okay, um, Keith, question for you. Is there a minimum or maximum number of courses you can take? Uh, we don't stipulate a minimum or maximum, but there are sort of guidelines. The standard offer would be three A-level equivalent type uh, subjects. Uh, some people who have uh, obviously perhaps difficulties uh, attending all the time or have a, a health need, we can actually adapt the program. As we've all mentioned all the way through that we will speak and look at every person who applies individually. We won't overload or we won't sort of uh, undersell our courses and not give you enough if we think you're capable of doing more. The maximum anybody's ever done at our place was six, but that's very, very rare. Five's very rare and it's not necessary, nor's four really. So three A-level equivalents is what we normally uh, obviously ask for a student to do. Great, thank you, Keith. Um, Ian, I think we're back, back to you with this one. If I take maths, do I also have to take further maths? Oh, uh, no. But I'll be, be careful. So if you're doing, you can do maths by itself. Uh, however, you can't do further maths by itself. So if you want to do further maths, you do have to study maths as well. But it's not the other way around. So you can do maths by itself. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, question here about chemistry. What do you do in M uh, chemistry A level? Is it the hardest science subject? Is chemistry the hardest? I think our chemistry teacher would say yes. Uh, however, I don't, it's, it's, it's not, I wouldn't say there's a hardest subject. I would say chemistry is definitely a tricky subject. Uh, but listen, if you're into your science and you, you know, you've been doing well at science so far at school, uh, I think you'd be fine. I mean, you know, results in terms of our results last year and the year before in chemistry have been very strong. So students are doing very well. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's an easy course. I wouldn't say it's a really hard course. I'll just say, you know, if you're into that, if you're into your sciences and you're willing to work hard, you should be fine. Okay, great. Uh, another sciencey question. Is biomedical science helpful if you want to do biochemistry? Yes. <laughs> Simple answer. Yes, perfect. Okay. Uh, a sport question here. How much practical do you do in BTEC sport? Uh, so, so on the BTEC sport course, there are a range of units. Some of them are theoretical. Some of them have a lot more practical applications. So uh, if you think about the sort of range of careers you can go into in the sports and sort of health sectors, some of them are very theoretical, like physiotherapy, and you need to have a very, very good understanding of anatomy and how the body functions. Um, some of them are a lot more practical. For example, if you work in, in, the, in the fitness industry, uh, instructing exercise and things like that. So 
I would say that uh, there's uh, quite, a, quite a lot of practical in the sport course in the sense that it will be the practical application of a lot of skills, particularly with things in the gym where we've got access, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it's not a course where, for example, you know, we're going to turn up with a tennis racket one day and then go play tennis because actually the sorts of careers you'll end up in the future uh, are going to be sort of coaching roles and, and fitness training roles, psychology, that sort of stuff. So uh, it's probably a different type of practical to the one that people would think when you think of sport. But you'll get plenty in there in the gym on fitness training, uh, in the sports or when you're coaching sessions, etc. That sort of stuff. Great. Thank you, Matt. Uh, question here, can you study health and social care at the sixth form? Who can help with that one? I know we do that over at East Coast College. Yes, I'll, I'll answer that question. You can study health and social care at the sixth form, but the group size this year was small enough that we combined it with the lower stop at East Coast, uh, over the lower stop to literally 20, 30 yards from the building. And so the answer is yes. But if numbers are low, because a lot of our students who do health and social care want to do it, actually prefer in the end to go to the biomedical science course, because it obviously opens up a few more options for them. Okay, great. Thank you, Keith. Um, right. Okay. Somebody asked here, how do we get a prospectus? So I can help with this one. So um, our new prospectuses have been delivered to all local high schools. So all our feeder high schools, Lower Stoff, Great Yarmouth, Beckles, Hakefield, even as far as Norwich, we've delivered them out to all of our um, local schools. So um, if, you're at, if you're at a school locally, then um, make sure you ask. They should have a huge stack of them um, and you can grab one um, from school. Um, you can also go onto our website and request to have a prospectus sent out to you at home. If you go to our homepage, you'll see, I think there's a tab along the top or it's in one of the drop down menus and you can request a prospectus so we can send that out to you at home. If you can't find that, then get in touch with us directly, get in touch with the marketing team and we'll arrange to get one sent out to you. So um, our email address is nice and simple. It's just marketing at eastcoast.ac.uk. Uh, and if you drop us an email and request a prospectus, we can get one sent out to you as well. So plenty of ways to grab one. Um, and obviously a lot of what, well, everything that's in our prospectus is also replicated on our websites as well. So um, I know sometimes it's really nice to be able to look through a physical copy and have a proper browse through the pages. So please get in touch if you, if you want one sent to you. If not, have a look on our website and all of the information is replicated on there as well. So I hope that helps. Um, okay. Somebody's asked, what's the difference between an A-level and a B-tech? I'm happy to take this one again if you want to. <laughs> uh, the difference is uh, there's a different way of working. Uh, the B-techs are a little bit more practical and, as I say, more coursework uh, orientated. Uh, the A-levels are uh, more exam-based, uh, in other words, it's a more theoretical, and then at the end of the years, you will have to obviously take your exams, and obviously that how well you do in the exam will actually go through to your mark. Whereas a BTEC, there will be probably 50 to 60% of the course would actually be on coursework and applied uh, skills. Great, thank you, Keith. While I've got you, um, somebody else has asked about what a normal day looks like in terms of timing. So they've, they've asked, what, what kind of time does college start? What kind of time does it finish? Right, if, if I, it's, it differs per day uh, because obviously the fact is we have a longer, uh, longer sort of uh, study time certain days. But if I said to you basically about nine o'clock to four o'clock, that is roughly the day that we have. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, slight differences, but nine to four is roughly what we do. Great, thank you. I'll just um, jump in real quick on that one. Yeah, yeah. Just, I can imagine some students thinking, blind, we're doing nine till four every day. Just to clarify, so it's nine till four, uh, but there might be some gaps in the day. So you might have like a lesson from nine till 10, then you might have a gap from 10 to 11, uh, and then you might have another lesson, maybe 11.20 till 12.50. So it's kind of on and off. It's not like school where you have constant lessons all the time. You'll have some lessons and you'll have some freeze as well. Great. Thank you, Ian. Um, uh, somebody's asked a question. We've had two very similar questions, actually. Um, how much of a step up is it from GCSE to A-level? 
I'm happy to take it again, but I think probably the DOFs would be better answering this. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take it then, why not? Uh, I've put the question already. One, one more time, Amy, what was the question again? Well, somebody's asked how much of a step up is it from GCSE ah. to A-level? And then another question is, how different is A-level maths to GCSE maths? So very similar in terms of what, what's, the, what's the step up like? What's the step up? Um, okay, so I'll be honest with you, it is quite a big step. Uh, I won't sugarcoat it. Um, yeah, it's going to be quite a big step, particularly this year, of course, with COVID. Uh, bless them, a lot of the year 11s in the local area didn't quite finish their programme. So it was a bigger step up this year, but usually it's quite a big step up. Uh, I mean, I can obviously talk about maths a bit more because I do, I'm part of the maths department. Uh, so in terms of GCSE maths, um, I would say if you were getting a very high grade at GCSE maths, it ends up being a fairly smooth transition. Um, but if you're sort of a slightly lower grade towards the sort of sevens and sixes in maths, uh, then there's a big step. So I think it depends on how well you've done at GCSE. If you've got really high grades at GCSE, the step up isn't quite so bad. Um, but, you know, majority of students may be getting around, say, sixes, five, sixes, sevens. It's a bit more of a step. Um, it obviously varies a bit per subject. So uh, it does depend on the subject. Obviously, so some subjects at college don't actually have an A-level before it. So, for example, philosophy, there's no GCSE in philosophy. Uh, but for maths in particular, it is quite a big step. But I think one of the key things that we make sure we do is support students in that step. Um, so we really do put the effort in early in the year to make sure students are filling those gaps and are feeling sort of supported and confident with the courses they're doing. So, yeah. 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 Can I just add to that as well? We, we obviously get students with all, uh, all sorts of kind of GCC outcomes and um you know my background being probably more from the btec point of view we regularly get students with sort of fours five profiles across the board some very very successful btec grades so i think mm -hmm. whatever your kind of gcc outcomes yes it is a big step up and, and there'll be lots of skills you need to develop around your your, your independence and and, uh, and things like that but we we support you through that and we've got a very very good track record of being successful with that as well Great, thank you, Matt. Um, and another question um, for you, if I can. Um, somebody's got in contact about media studies. Um, they're really interested in studying this at A-level. They noticed it's in our prospectus, but haven't seen it mentioned tonight. Um, and we have mentioned film studies instead. Could you just explain what's happening with our, with our courses around that? Yes, that person's very eagle-eyed, so that's a good spot there. So, yeah, as, as a few people have said this evening, we're constantly sort of adapting our curriculum based on lots of things. Um, so uh, in terms of media, we've got uh, two options with media. We run a vocational course, uh, CTEC in digital media, and we've decided to run that in 2021 uh, as opposed to the A-level because the content is exactly the same. Um, so I would say this person, if they are very, very interested in pursuing a career in media, then I'd recommend they take the, the largest VTEC option or sorry, CTEC option they can in digital media because that's what's going to prepare them best to work in that industry um, and to look at either A-levels or BTECs that complement that program to make a full package. So for example, if they do really want to work in the television or film industry, then actually the best thing they could be doing is film studies as an A-level uh, alongside uh, a double, if you like, C-tech in digital media. Um, if they wanted to go into journalism, then it might be looking at English language alongside that, that double CTEC. So actually the reason we've changed it is because it allows us to have a much better kind of media based package for students where they can really specialize if they want to. Great. Thank you. Yeah. I hope that answers your, your question. Um, brilliant. Okay. Uh, good question here. Um, when studying a level business, is there any opportunity to link with any businesses for placement or experience? Who can take this one? Um, I'll take it. My quick answer is I'm not sure. Um, but I think the best thing to do would be to come along to the open evening and ask the teachers. Um, there's lots of business links and our business teacher is, is, is great um, with linking in obviously different opportunities to like learn about different businesses and we we do encourage work experience as much as possible but whether or not you actually go into a different a business uh, I don't know is anybody else yeah i'm quite happy to help you out here katie uh, there is a work placement officer who comes into our uh, obviously college and sorts out long-term uh, sort of uh, work experiences for students and so, yes, uh, funny enough, today I had two students come into my office from uh, the business uh, uh, BTEC 
who uh, work for, through Morrisons and uh, they've also been in contact with the Morrisons management and uh, head office to actually get further help with their studies and to help with a charitable uh, cause which they're trying to run. So the chance to actually act as a proper business person inside the business is, a, is there. Great, thank you Keith. Um, question here, uh, can you start on a BTEC extended, extended diploma course on one subject, so the equivalent of three A-levels, and then reduce it to a two A-level equivalent if you found you needed to? I'll take this one as well. Yes, uh, obviously that, you know, you would have to go through some advice and guidance first because that may make uh, going to university difficult. But if it means obviously the fact is that uh, your health or something is getting in the way of your learning, yes, the answer is yes. Great, thank you. Um, good question here from someone. Um, I got five and fives in all of my subjects. And it's say, for instance, if someone else got sixes in all of theirs, would they have a better chance of getting in the sixth form than me? No. <laughs> they, we offer a place to everyone. Uh, you know, if you got fives or sixes, but what course you will get on would depend sometimes on your grades. Uh, if you've got all fives, the likelihood is that you can get on to most of the A-level courses and all the BTEC courses or the BTEC type courses. But there are some science courses uh, which are probably require a higher level of uh, output, if you got me, exams. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thanks for that, Keith. Um, and as I think it's been said throughout this evening, you know, we support all of the students and, and every case is looked at individually. So you don't need to worry about what other people have got, what your friends have got. If, if there's something you really want to do and, you know, you want to come with us, come to our college, then our team will, will work with you to do the best they can to, to get you a place and to get you on the courses that, that you really want to do. So um, it's always just worth applying and, and not worrying about what anyone else has got. Um, question, another question here, is maths helpful to take alongside sociology or criminology? Oh, I'll try this one, should I? Um, sociology or criminology? I have to admit, I don't know a lot about those two courses. I obviously know a lot about maths. Um, my gut says I don't think it's definitely not essential. Um, I think the aspects of maths that may be useful for the problem solving side of things, but in terms of the actual con sort of mathematics in those two courses, sociology and criminology, I don't think there's there's a great deal. If you ask me the same question about the sciences, I'd be saying yes, uh, biology, chemistry, physics, and those sorts of courses. In fact, psychology. Um, I might be wrong on this one. Maybe Kate can jump in, but I wouldn't I say just think there isn't a lot of math content really yeah. in, in criminology or sociology and i don't think psychology either i think there's actually in psychology there's definitely some there's definitely some statistical elements in there so stats is quite handy for psychology uh similar for geography statistics is quite handy but specifically sociology and criminology i would say it's not uh not necessary no no okay thanks um are there any extracurricular clubs or social aspects to college life i.e sports clubs who can help with it um, yeah, I'll jump in here. So we have um, plus more enrichment. Um, so that's a range of different opportunities that you can get involved with um, at college. Um, so some of those are, are based on site, some of them are virtually. Um, so for example, um, a game, gaming club. Um, uh, we link up to um, some, some of our local partners in terms of kind of referring you through to, um, to sports opportunities. Um, so I think, and that's always kind of been added to. So um, it's definitely something to keep an eye on and students when they start actually ask for, uh, for various things they're interested in. Um, so we'll try and react to that as much as possible. Great, thank you Nikki. Um, question here, what kind of texts do you study in English literature? Matt, are you able to help with that one? <laughs> yeah, I'm the perfect person for that one. I will. Uh, I might be able to help a little bit there, Matt. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you some off the top of my head because I know that Jane Eyre is one of the texts. Uh, King Lear is one of the the texts. Uh, they look at poetry as well. Um, I think Enron is one of the texts, and there's definitely something by Carol Ann Duffy as well. So um, that's my best stab at it. I would say that the information is almost certainly on our website or in the prospectus in terms of the texts that you study. And you can always uh, pick the brains of one of the English team at one of the open events in future to get a better answer than that. Great, 
That was actually a good start, Matt. You've actually got Dr. Faustus and Remains of the Day as well. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Great, there you go. Can I just add though, if you um, if you wanted to email here to help at eastcoast.ac.uk, any specific questions like that, I'll always refer through to the directly to the teacher so they can um, get back in contact um, if you needed to know more. So that, that option is there for anyone as well. Yeah, great. Okay, so uh, I think we're coming to the end of our questions, just a couple uh, more here. Um, so this relates to um, Ian, uh, an answer you gave earlier. So in the periods where you have no lessons, are you allowed on campus, off campus, or do you have to stay on at college from nine till four if you don't have lessons and, and that kind of thing? Okay, so the simple answer is nope, you've not got to stay at college. Uh, so it all depends on what you've organized in your own time really. So the simple answer is no, you can go off site. Uh, you obviously go into town if you want to, or go home if you want to, things like that. Um, but, you know, there are quite a lot of students that would, I would say, would spend their time at college and actually sort of revising, doing homework, catching up on things. Um, so we are encouraging students to stay in the building. Um, I mean, with COVID, it's slightly different, uh, but on a normal year, we'd be encouraging students to, to stay in the building uh, and get on with their work. But like, the simple answer is no, they can head off site if they wish. Great. Yeah, thank you. And um, I think we've got our final question here. Um, what GCSE grade is recommended if you want to take English English literature? I'm, I'm for, again, this will be in our prospectus and on the college website. Um, but from memory, uh, we're looking for uh, a standard A level entry criteria, which is five GCSEs, grade four to nine, and we're looking for a five or above in English literature. Great, thank you, Matt. Okay. Yes, we are at the end of our questions now, so that's brilliant. Thank you so much. It's, it's so great to see so many of you uh, logging on and being involved this evening and so many great questions as well. So we really hope that you've um, taken a lot from this evening and, and you've now got a better idea about what we offer at the college and, and what you can study with us. Um, as you'll see on screen now, um, there are so many ways to keep up to date with us and get in touch with us. Um, we're on social media, so Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If you follow our page on there, um, you can keep up to date with everything we're posting. So if we've got new courses, um, deadlines, uh, just general college information, um, interesting stuff that's happening around the college, you can get a good feel for things. It's all on there, so make sure you give us a follow. Um, email address on there as well, info at l6sc.org. If you've got any questions, anything you want to ask, anything you think of after this uh, session, don't be afraid to get in touch. Um, telephone number as well, again, we're always happy for you to give us a call. And of course, our website, which is on screen now, um, www.lowstoffssc.ac.uk, where we said all of the information is available on there. So you can find everything you've heard tonight, all about um, the, the support, the financial support, the courses we offer, our virtual tours, and of course, um, where you can also book onto our open campus event uh, which is taking place on Saturday, October the 10th, where we'd love to see you all. Um, so get booked on that if you would like to come and see us. So thanks again for um, joining us this evening, and uh, we hope we get to meet you all in person very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.